Wow, Don. Bravo. I haven't heard anything quite like it in ages. Where do you discover such incredible talents? What are your plans for her, by the way? Don found himself at home that day, diligently working on financial reports, when the unexpected phone call interrupted his focus. Don was momentarily puzzled by the phone call from his friend James as his mind had been deeply immersed in analyzing various figures on the documents before him. Struggling to shift his focus, he continued to glance at the numbers while trying to make sense of his friend's words. Eventually, he managed to tear his gaze away from the papers and fully concentrate on the conversation with James. Let me tell you, Don, she's absolutely amazing. Fantastic work. What are you talking about, James? I've been stuck at home for the past 20 days, I think. I haven't found anyone to perform at the restaurant and I'm not sure what you're referring to. Don's nervousness grew as he needed to focus on his reports, but his curiosity was piqued as well. I don't know if you're still the owner of the tomb, but let me tell you this. That girl's voice is like a unicorn emerging from the mist on the other side of Adams Creek. I'd like a table reserved by default every time she performs. I've never heard anyone sing with such a sweet and melodious voice. And the songs themselves? They're entirely new to me as well. I'm thinking she or her family must be the creators. I mean, the songs are truly original. Whatever you did, I thoroughly enjoyed it. If not for work, I might practically move into your restaurant. James wrapped up the conversation and hung up the phone. Don stared at his phone for a moment, processing what he had just heard. James Mendez was not only the deputy mayor, but also an old friend of Don's. It wasn't the call itself that surprised Don, but rather the content of what James had shared with him. The last performers Don recalled booking were a folk rock band scheduled to perform for three weeks, including that very night. Now he found himself utterly confused and unable to make sense of the situation. To unravel the mystery, or at least attempt to grasp what exactly James had been raving about, Don decided he needed to either call the manager or visit the restaurant personally. Naturally, his curiosity got the better of him, and he opted to drive to the tune himself. Mr. Don Brooks was far from being just an ordinary restaurateur. He was an individual who was genuinely passionate about his profession and constantly sought innovative ways to make his establishment truly remarkable. His dedication and enthusiasm not only fueled his creativity, but they also played a significant role in the numerous successes he achieved in setting his restaurant apart from the rest. Don Brooks' restaurant quickly gained a reputation as one of the finest dining establishments in town. As a result, eager patrons often found themselves booking reservations weeks in advance eager to secure a table at this much-coveted culinary hotspot. The exceptional dining experience provided by the restaurant consistently drew in both locals and visitors alike, cementing its status as a premier destination for food enthusiasts. The remarkable aspect of Mr. Brooks' approach to his restaurant was that he not only aimed to serve guests delectable meals, but also sought to delight and surprise them at every turn. He believed that an unforgettable dining experience was not just about tantalizing taste buds, but also about creating a unique atmosphere and presenting unexpected elements that would leave a lasting impression on his patrons. This commitment to innovation and excellence helped set Mr. Brooks's restaurant apart from others, making it truly extraordinary. Mr. Brooks frequently incorporated performance art into the dining experience at his restaurant, adding an element of excitement and anticipation for his patrons. He had a knack for discovering and showcasing a diverse array of incredibly talented performers, leaving guests eagerly wondering what sort of entertainment they might encounter during their next visit. At times, people affectionately refer to Mr. Brooks's restaurant as a philharmonic or theater reflecting the seamless blend of culinary and artistic experiences that he had masterfully created. This combination not only elevated the restaurant's reputation, but also contributed to its bustling atmosphere. The tune, as Mr. Brooks' restaurant was called, had earned a solid reputation among the high society clientele who frequented it. Don's unfulfilled aspirations of becoming an actor or singer may have played a part in his decision to dedicate a significant portion of the restaurant's space 
to a stage. This unique feature allowed him to blend his love for the performing arts with his passion for creating exceptional dining experiences. By doing so, Dom was able to fulfill his artistic desires while simultaneously providing a one-of-a-kind culinary and entertainment experience that attracted the attention and admiration of the city's elite. The tune reserved its larger events featuring more elaborate performances for weekends and holidays. Tammy, that girl is out there again. Yeah, I saw her. We should at least get her some food. Tammy, she's singing again. Did you see the crowd last time? What do you want me to do? Nothing really, just thought I'd let you know to watch the clouds. It's gonna pour soon. Look how she's dressed. Stop beating about the bush, Kevin. Tell me what to do. The manager of the tune and his assistant stood on the porch, observing a 12-year-old girl singing at the intersection of two busy streets. This wasn't their first time noticing the girl. She had been there on several occasions, standing and singing just as she was doing now. However, they couldn't actually hear her voice due to the distance and the constant hum of passing cars. Half an hour later, the noise outside had subsided, and both Tammy and Kevin could finally hear the girl's enchanting singing. So, what do we do? Kevin asked as a few heavy raindrops splattered on the ground. What do you mean, what do we do? Go get her, man, Tammy urged. I hope Mr. Brooks won't get mad at us, Kevin expressed before dashing out into the street. He won't be mad at all. He won't find better managers than us, Tammy said with a smile. Kevin had only recently started working at the restaurant, but he was already brimming with creative ideas. As an easygoing guy, he quickly built a strong report with his staff. Five minutes later, after the rain had ceased, Kevin returned with the girl in tow. Tammy's eyes widened in shock as she saw how drenched the young singer was. You're all wet. Hold on, we'll get you something to change into. Kevin, go fetch something hot from the kitchen for the kid. Tammy found her old uniform. The girl was quite tall, but she was too skinny. Let's tie it up here. Pull it up a little bit here. Look at you now, pretty. The girl smiled hesitantly. Tammy seated her at a table. Help yourself. So, I can't promise you anything yet, but you can try singing here. Whatever you get tipped is yours. Deal? The girl nodded and asked, Are the owners okay with that? You're good. Mr. Brooks is a cool guy, and if something happens, Kevin and I will be responsible. So don't worry, okay? What's your name, by the way? Dorothy. What a wonderful name. Are you from around here? Because I've never heard anything like your singing before. You don't have to answer if you don't want to. Dorothy looked up and quickly spoke up. No, it's all right. I can tell you my story. So, my mom and I moved here recently. Then my mom got sick. When she said the last sentence, her voice cracked and she couldn't hold back her emotions. Tammy placed a hand on her shoulder. It's okay. We can talk about it later, whenever you feel like it. By the way, we've got this wonderful guitar player. If you want, he can accompany your singing. Dorothy shrugged her shoulders and said, Well, I don't know. I've never tried singing to a guitar. I guess you can try now. Tammy was more worried than Dorothy. Kevin was also bustling about, setting up the mic and a chair for Dorothy. The audience watched it all unfold in the hall. Finally, everything was ready. The guitar player sat in the corner of the stage. Without a mic for now, he said he would join in if it worked out. As the music unfolded, Tammy realized that Dorothy's singing wasn't ordinary at all. It was something she had never heard before. It had to have a name or some sort of classification, but Tammy couldn't quite put her finger on what it was. The song Dorothy sang was entirely unfamiliar to Tammy. It felt like a captivating story, weaving an enchanting narrative that seemed to transcend time. The melody carried a sense of antiquity, as if it were a long-forgotten treasure resurfacing to bewitch the listeners with its haunting beauty. As the song came to an end, the room was enveloped in absolute silence for a few moments. Then, as if a spell had been broken, everyone in the hall rose to their feet. The sound of thunderous applause filled the air as the audience expressed their admiration and awe for Dorothy's mesmerizing performance. 
Several audience members, moved by Dorothy's captivating performance, approached the stage and placed money at her feet. Among the bills, there were some particularly large denominations, reflecting the deep impression she had made on their listeners. Dorothy glanced at the money with a frightened expression, then shifted her gaze to Tammy. Sensing her unease, Tammy approached Dorothy with a warm, reassuring smile, offering her comfort and support. They're yours. You've earned them, Tammy said. Dorothy accepted the money. I can buy some medicine for Mom. Sure. Do you have just one song? No, I know a lot of songs. My grandma taught me. These are all her songs. She composed them all herself. An hour later, Tammy guided Dorothy down from the stage. I know more songs. I think you need to take a break, honey. Have some tea, get something to eat, and if you want, you can go back and sing more. Tammy suggested keeping Dorothy's well-being in mind. After the break, Dorothy resumed singing, this time accompanied by the guitar. With its gentle and delicate melodies, the guitar complemented her voice perfectly, elevating her songs to the status of true masterpieces. The audience was captivated once again, utterly spellbound by the magic of Dorothy's performance. Tammy listened intently to Dorothy's performance, her eyes fixated on the young girl as she sang. The song that Dorothy was performing at that moment was the most extraordinary of all. The melody was intricate and complex, with a unique rhythm that Tammy had never heard before. As she listened, Tammy felt as if she were being transported to another world one that existed beyond the confines of time and space. For some inexplicable reason, Tammy found herself becoming emotional as she listened to Dorothy's captivating performance. Tears welled up in her eyes, and she struggled to keep them from spilling over. The beauty and power of Dorothy's voice and the melody were so overwhelming that Tammy couldn't help but feel moved by the sheer intensity of it all. She took a deep breath, trying to hold back the tears, and continued to listen, transfixed by the magic unfolding before her. At first, Tammy didn't quite comprehend why she was feeling so emotional, but as she listened to Dorothy's performance, something clicked in her mind and she realized that the song was an ancient lullaby. The melody was so hauntingly beautiful that it had touched a deep chord within her, evoking memories and emotions that she had long forgotten. As Don drove up to the restaurant, he noticed that the parking lot was unusually full of cars. At first he was surprised, but then he quickly realized that his restaurant was always bustling with activity. He parked his car and made his way towards the entrance, eager to see what was happening inside. Don took a moment to enjoy the fresh, post-rain air outside before heading inside. But as he approached the entrance, he changed his mind and decided to take a detour, opting instead to head to the patio. As he made his way there, he could hear the sound of someone singing on the stage inside. Curiosity peaked, Don quickened his pace, eager to see who was performing. As a restaurant owner who had always been on the lookout for talented performers, Don had developed a keen sense of what made a great singer. He couldn't help but notice the strong, powerful voice of the young girl on stage, and he found himself becoming more and more entranced by her performance. Suddenly. Something about her singing made Don freeze in his tracks. His heart started pounding as a thought crossed his mind and he couldn't shake off the feeling that he had heard that voice before. Don couldn't believe his ears. He took a few more steps closer to the stage, straining to hear the girl's voice more clearly. As she continued to sing, he felt a sense of familiarity wash over him. He knew he had heard that song before, but it had been a long time since he had last heard it. He couldn't see the girl's face since she was standing sideways to him, but the more he listened, the more convinced he became that he had heard that song before. As he reflected on his memories, he realized that the person who had sung that song to him before was a very kind and gentle girl who had mentioned that her mother had taught her to sing those songs. The memory flooded back to him and he felt a deep sense of nostalgia and longing. It was as if a part of his past that he had long forgotten had suddenly resurfaced, brought to life once again through the voice of this talented young girl. His mind drifted back to a time when he and his friends had set out on a journey into the Alaskan wilderness. He remembered the excitement and anticipation of the trip, the thrill of adventure that had spurred them on. It had been a time of youth, of carefree abandon, 
and of the kind of wildness that can only be found in the vast, untamed expanse of the natural world. He remembered one particular day when they had to navigate down a river in boats. The water was choppy and treacherous, and the boats were barely holding together as they bounced and rocked along the current. The current had swept them away, making it difficult for him to steer his boat out of its grasp. He had struggled against the water, his muscles straining as he tried to stay afloat, and for a moment he had felt a sense of panic rise within him. He was carried along the current, helpless to steer himself away from the waterfall that loomed ahead. And then, as he went over the edge, everything had become a blur of motion and sensation. He had felt himself flipping upside down, his heart pounding in his chest as he tumbled head over heels towards the water below. After hitting the water, he had seen a flash of light in his eyes, and then everything had gone dark. He had woken up in a small hut, surrounded by unfamiliar faces and sounds. He felt disoriented and confused, his body aching and sore from the fall. And then, slowly, he had become aware of a young girl standing beside him, her face full of concern and kindness. She had explained to him that she was a local from a nearby village, and that she and her family had found him unconscious and pulled him from the river. It was a simple village with its dozen or so houses nestled amidst the rugged landscape of the Alaskan wilderness, and he remembered the family that had taken him in, the old mother who had welcomed him with open arms, and the young girl who had nursed him back to health. When Don hit the surface of the water, he also hit a rock. That's when he had lost consciousness. His body was tossed about by the swirling water, his skin scraped raw against the rough surfaces of the rocks and branches that lined the riverbed. The gentle touch of the girl's hands tended to his wounds, her soothing voice calm as she spoke words of comfort and encouragement. The girl had been just a few years younger than him, but she had taken charge of his care with a maturity beyond her years. She had applied herbs and poultices to his wounds and had nursed him back to health with a steady diet of fish and berries gathered from the surrounding forest. Don had been touched by the kindness and generosity of this stranger who had taken him into her home and treated him with such care and concern. Sometimes the girl sang him lullabies. The gentle melodies had soothed his troubled mind and helped him to relax into a deep and restful sleep. He realized now that there was something universal and timeless about lullabies. They had the power to comfort and calm even in the most difficult of circumstances. As he lay in the small hut, Don had had ample time to reflect on his life and the choices he had made up until that point. He had been a successful businessman, but he had also been consumed by a restless ambition that left little room for anything else. Now, lying there in the care of this young girl and her mother, he realized how much he had been missing. He had been so focused on his own success and achievement that he had forgotten the value of human connection and the importance of living a life that was guided by compassion and kindness. A week had passed since the accident, and finally he began to feel better. With renewed strength, he ventured outside and was immediately captivated by the beauty of natural world that surrounded him. The lush green trees, vibrant flowers, and crystal clear streams were breathtaking, and he couldn't help but marvel at the wonders of nature. As he explored the area, he noticed the subtle details that made this place so special. The gentle rustling of leaves in the breeze, the chirping of birds in the distance, and the sweet fragrance of wildflowers all contributed to the serene atmosphere that enveloped him. Don couldn't help but be captivated by the beauty of the girl who had taken care of him and nursed him back to health. As she went about her work around the house, he found himself stealing glances at her, admiring her grace and poise. Her long flowing hair shimmered in the sunlight, and her eyes sparkled with a kindness and warmth that Don found irresistible. He watched as she moved with effortless ease, tending to the plants in the garden and preparing meals in the kitchen. Don felt a sense of gratitude towards her that went beyond words. It wasn't just that she had taken care of him when he was sick, but it was also the way she had done it, with such care, compassion, and dedication. He knew that he would never be able to repay her for what she had done for him. As Don and Elsie spent time together in the village, they got to know each other better. One day, while they were sitting by the river, Elsie told Don her name. He couldn't help but chuckle a little, and she asked him what was so amusing. 
Don explained that he had never heard the name Elsie before and that it sounded funny to him. Elsie smiled and asked Don if he liked any other names. Don thought for a moment and said that he liked the name Dorothy. Elsie was surprised but pleased with Don's answer. She thought that Dorothy was a lovely name and asked him why he liked it. Don told her that it reminded him of his grandmother, who had been a kind and gentle woman with a warm heart. The attraction between the young ones had been growing stronger each day, and eventually they gave in to their feelings. They spent the night together, wrapped in each other's arms, and lost in the passion of the moment. However, their moment of bliss was interrupted the following day when Don's friends finally arrived. After searching for him for over two weeks, they had tracked him down to the small village where he had been staying. Don was overjoyed to see his friends and he rushed to greet them, eager to catch up on all that had happened during his time away. However, as he introduced him to the girl who had taken care of him, he sensed the tension in the air. It didn't take long for his friends to notice the closeness between Don and the girl and they couldn't help but feel a little suspicious. They had always been protective of Don and they didn't want to see him hurt. The girl was indeed sad to see Don go and his promise to come back and take her with him had given her hope for a better future. She believed in his promise and she eagerly awaited his return. However, as days turned into weeks and weeks turned into months, the girl began to lose hope. She heard nothing from Don and the memory of their time together began to fade. Meanwhile, Don had returned to his busy life in the city, overwhelmed with work and chores. As time passed, he found himself getting caught up in the hustle and bustle of city life and he gradually forgot about his promise to the girl. Don had been standing on the patio, lost in thought, as he listened to a song that reminded him of Elsie. As the song ended, Don walked into the restaurant and headed straight to his office. He sat down at his desk, staring at the computer screen, but his mind was elsewhere. Tammy noticed him and walked over to him. Mr. Brooks, what a surprise to see you here today. We weren't expecting you. Expect me any day, Tammy. That girl, can you ask her to come to my office? I want to know where she knows these songs from. I was actually planning to ask her the same question. I've never heard anything like it. Dorothy sat in front of Don, trembling with fear. As he looked into her eyes, he couldn't help but cough uncontrollably for a few seconds. They were the most stunning yellowish eyes he had ever seen. The only person he knew with such captivating eyes was Elsie. Finally, Don found the strength and courage to smile at Dorothy, trying to ease her fears. I only look scary. I'm actually quite kind. It's nice to meet you. Can you tell me a little more about yourself? Dorothy looked relieved and began to relax a bit as she shared her story. But as soon as Don heard her name, he froze and looked at her with a mix of shock and disbelief. Tammy, who had been silently observing everything, stepped forward to ask if Don was okay. After a few moments, Don managed to compose himself enough to ask the question that had been weighing on his mind. What's your mother's name, kid? Dorothy answered without hesitation. My mother's name is Elsie. She's in the hospital sick and doesn't know I'm here. Grandma always wanted us to move to this town for some reason. When she passed away a few months ago, Mom and I moved here. Tammy was getting more and more confused as the conversation unfolded. Don's hand was getting lower and lower as he struggled to process the information he was hearing. He couldn't believe what he was thinking, but he had a feeling that Dorothy was his daughter. He asked himself why he hadn't known about her all these years, if she was indeed his daughter. As Don struggled with his thoughts and emotions, Tammy looked at him with concern and asked, Is everything okay, Mr. Brooks? Don didn't say anything. It turned out that Elsie had never stopped waiting for Don all these years, because he had promised to come back. Don lifted his hand and asked Dorothy, Where's your mom right now? Dorothy replied, She was taken to the hospital, and we got evicted from the room we had been renting. The doctors told us we don't have medical insurance, and they won't treat her. Don felt a wave of sadness and guilt wash over him. Elsie and Dorothy had moved to the town six months ago. They rented a small apartment and everything seemed to be going well. Elsie worked long hours as a dishwasher in a nearby restaurant trying to make ends meet. Meanwhile, Dorothy used her beautiful voice to earn some extra money by singing in the streets. 
Initially, they were getting by and had sufficient funds for food. However, as the rent continued to rise, their income struggled to keep pace. They faced difficulty in qualifying for other rental properties as landlords typically demanded tenants to have an income three or four times the monthly rent. Moreover, their previous eviction further complicated matters as many property owners were hesitant to rent to them due to their tainted rental history. As a result, Elsie and Dorothy found themselves in a challenging situation, struggling to secure a new and affordable place to call home. Don rose from his chair and glanced at Tammy. I believe she's at the public hospital. We should go. Immediately. Don hesitated for a moment as he approached Dorothy. Then, grabbing her hand, he let her out. Tammy watched him intently from beneath her hat as he passed by. Don instructed Dorothy to wait outside before returning to his office and closing the door. Why are you staring at me like that, Tammy? No, it's not what you're thinking. I had no idea. How could I have known? You know me, right? Am I heartless? Tell me. Tammy looked up at Don and grinned. You've got ink on your nose. She burst into laughter but quickly grew serious. Gazing up at Don, she inquired. What are you planning to do? I hope you're happy about the situation. Don sighed and responded. Tammy, this is precisely why I've never let you leave the restaurant. You know how to ask the tough questions. He thought for a moment before continuing. Ultimately, yes, I am happy. But my feelings are mixed at the moment, especially because of Elsie. I mean, I don't know the extent of her condition. By the time Don and Dorothy arrived at the hospital, night had fallen. Unfortunately, due to Elsie's lack of medical insurance and her inability to provide a deposit for additional tests, the doctors could only keep her stable. That was the extent of the care they were able to offer. Dorothy waited patiently in the hallway while Don entered the ward and caught sight of Elsie. His heart skipped a beat upon seeing her lying on the bed, asleep and unaware of his presence. He stood there taking in her appearance as long-lost memories came flooding back to him. Despite the dark circles under her eyes and her frail figure due to malnutrition, Elsie's natural beauty shone through, not allowing her illness to overshadow her. Don slowly approached the bed and sat down at the edge. Taking her hand in his, he gazed at her face for a long time. A wave of sadness washed over him, and he fought back the urge to cry. Don managed to hold back the tears that threatened to spill over and blur his vision. Instead, an uncomfortable lump formed in his throat, creating a burning sensation. As he closed his eyes, Dorothy's face appeared before him, leaving little room for doubt that she was indeed his daughter. The striking resemblance between them was undeniable, further solidifying his suspicions. Don's emotions finally got the better of him, and a few teardrops fell onto Elsie's hand, betraying the overwhelming feelings that had been welling up inside him. Elsie's eyes, heavy from the sedatives, slowly opened as she felt the tears on her hand. A slightly tilted head with tear-filled eyes gazed at her, revealing the depth of emotion in that moment. Elsie furrowed her brows in a visible frown, her groggy mind attempting to make sense of the situation and understand the emotional scene before her. I'm so sorry, Elsie, Don whispered, his voice laden with regret. It was evident that Elsie was too weak to immediately respond, as she struggled to process what she had heard. Or perhaps it was her generous heart that prompted her to simply offer a faint, forgiving smile in response to Don's heartfelt apology. It's okay, she whispered softly. No, it's not okay. I'm sorry, Elsie. I didn't keep my promise, Don said through his tears, which were flowing even more freely now. Despite her own tears, Elsie continued to smile, and in that moment, her smile and tears only served to enhance her beauty adding a tender warmth to her expression. Please take care of Dorothy, Elsie implored. A few minutes later, doctors entered the room and began preparing to move Elsie. Dorothy, overwhelmed with emotion, sobbed loudly as she buried her face into her mother's shoulder. Gently, Elsie stroked her daughter's hair, offering what comfort she could in her heart-wrenching moment. Everything's gonna be okay. Mr. Brooks promised you will be taken care of. Elsie reassured her daughter. Mommy, I love you so much. Promise me you won't leave me alone. Promise me, please. You won't be alone, baby. You'll have a... At that moment, Elsie glanced at Don, who looked at Dorothy with eyes filled with guilt. Dorothy's gaze shifted between Don and Elsie, then back to Don. 
she carefully studied his features for a while. During this process, her facial expressions transitioned from doubt to realization and then back to doubt before the truth finally dawned on her. In that moment, her expression gradually changed from sympathy for her mother to a visible anger directed towards her father. Dawn gazed at Dorothy with sympathy, understanding the complexity of her emotions. He desperately wanted to offer her a comforting hug in that moment, but he held back, allowing her the space to process the situation and decide how to move forward. I'm sorry, kiddo. I didn't know about you at all. If I had known you existed, I would have done everything in my power, even give my life to be there for you. Please forgive me. Dawn pleaded, his voice full of sincerity and regret. Elsie took her daughter's hand and gently calmed her down. Honey, your father has a good heart. We were both young and... She trailed off, acknowledging that their past decisions and circumstances had led them to this point, but emphasizing Dawn's good intentions. As the doctors wheeled Elsie out and prepared to place her in the ambulance, Dorothy asked Dawn, Where are they taking her? I've arranged everything at a private clinic. She's going to be treated, and she'll be back with us soon, Dorothy. When the ambulance left, Dawn said to Dorothy, Let's go home. He waited for her reaction. She stood motionless, and Dawn opened the passenger door of his truck for her without saying anything. Dorothy remained there, emotionless and exhausted from the day's revelations. She hardly even noticed what Dawn had been doing all this time. Dawn approached her and stood very close to her. He opened his arms as if asking for permission to hug her. He took another small step towards her and she slowly leaned her hand on his chest. Finally, for the first time, Don hugged his daughter. He felt an incredible sense of happiness and contentment knowing that this girl, with her silky hair and soft shoulders, was his own daughter. He could feel a surge of energy flowing into him, making him feel like a proud father. Thank you for giving me a second chance, he whispered. It took some time for Dorothy to adjust to living in a stranger's house, especially since that stranger was also her father. But as the days went by, they began to build a relationship and understand one another, slowly forging a bond that had been missing for so long. The day following Elsie's transfer to a cozy private clinic, Don paid her a visit. It was a lovely day with a refreshing breeze that came after a night of heavy rainfall. Don's heart was brimming with joy and satisfaction, as in just one day, he found himself a family. Before driving to the clinic, Don decided to stop by the restaurant. As always, it was teeming with customers, but he managed to pull the manager Tammy and her assistant Kevin aside for a brief conversation. Who came up with the idea for Dorothy to sing here? Don inquired looking at Tammy and Kevin. They exchanged concerned glances before Tammy spoke up. Mr. Brooks? I apologize, it was our idea, both Kevin's and mine. We thought Dorothy had a beautiful voice and... Tammy's explanation was cut short as Dawn interrupted her. So you're telling me it wasn't one of you, but both of you came up with the idea together? We did. I kept telling Tammy we should bring Dorothy over. I'm so sorry, Mr. Brooks, if that was against the restaurant's rules. Kevin admitted, being a recent addition to the restaurant's team. Dawn stared at them intently. His stern expression slowly transformed into a smile. Relax, both of you. You did great. Have I told you how much I don't want you to leave? He directed the last part at Tammy and grinned. Man, you scared us, Mr. Brooks. Tammy sighed with relief and started to laugh. Okay, guys. I don't usually do this, but this is a special occasion. Follow me. Don led them to his office and wrote out two checks worth $20,000 each for Tammy and Kevin. They exchanged surprised looks at first, but then began dancing in excitement. Alright, alright guys, back to work, it's the start of a busy day. Upon arriving at the clinic, the doctors provided Don with an update on Elsie's condition. He peered through the window into her room and saw three medical professionals attentively caring for her. Don felt hopeful that Elsie would soon recover. Carrying a large bouquet of flowers, he entered the room where Elsie was resting. The nurses, noticing Don, decided to leave them alone for some private time. Don gently placed a bouquet on a nearby stand and took a seat next to Elsie's bed. How are you feeling, Elsie? I'm feeling much better. Thank you for everything. Elsie, thank you for everything. I've never even realized that you were the reason I'm still alive and here. I've never even properly thanked you. I'm going to fix it now, 
if you let me. A month later, Elsie was getting discharged from the clinic. She looked so beautiful and healthy. Tammy and Kevin were busy decorating the restaurant for the special dinner tonight. Dorothy was nervous. She was getting prepared to sing on stage to her parents. It was a beautiful day for everyone. Elsie and Dawn danced in the middle of the hall to Elsie's beautiful and melodic singing. When the evening drew to its end, Tammy approached Don as he was standing on the patio and smoking. Don was looking into the distance, immersed in thoughts. So, why did you never go back? Don didn't look at Tammy. He was amused at her question. Tammy, did I tell you I didn't want you to leave the restaurant? Tammy smiled. She knew she hit the nail on the head with her question, but he didn't say anything to her. The reason why Don never went back to Elsie was quite simple, but he never talked about it to anyone. He wanted to keep it a secret because he might ruin everything. The reason he never went back was because he loved Elsie so much that he wanted to forget her. She was so beautiful that he was scared of losing her. He knew now that it was foolish to think of it that way, but that's how he felt back then. He was young and scared about his feelings for her, but when he realized that his actions had consequences, he decided to try work things out. He didn't know what lay ahead, but he was happy that he had a beautiful daughter and a potential wife.